Hey folks, welcome back to the feature crew. So super exciting, we have another open air release, um, just like two days apart. Um, this one is Deep Research. So it's the next kind of agent. It's really looking at taking a long time to compile a comprehensive report. It goes, goes quite a bit deeper than if you just did a normal web search. Um, so let's dive in, uh, let's hit it. Let's do it. Okay, awesome. So here we are in the uh, chat composer. So the way you invoke deep research is actually using the button. Um, it uses 03 from what they told in the announcement. Um, so you can actually have the model select to be different. For now, we have it on 03 mini high if we want to iterate. So the first thing it typically does is it comes back with some clarifying questions. Then what should happen typically, it's going to say, you know, acknowledge. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some search. And the, the runtime on this will be minutes usually. Uh, so it'll think for a long period of time, up to I think a half hour is the cap. We're gonna walk through some examples that we ran earlier ahead of time, uh, so we're not sitting here and waiting. Uh, so first one we looked at is near and uh, near and dear to me. Herculaneum is a one of the cities that got destroyed by the volcano in Pompeii, but it's also one of our greatest sources of archaeological evidence for ancient Rome, the Greco-Roman era. And so one of the historic problems with this research is anthropology, archaeology, historical academic papers all tend to be very specific, right? They're siloed into their specific, specific thing. You might research vessels or things that would appear in a Roman shop. The other person might research clothing. Another person might research a particular dig site. So this information is scattered all around and only parts of the city have been researched or mapped. What we wanted it to do was see if it could research all of those various sources from all of these academics that are very specific in their research and compile that into a generalized understanding of the city with the idea of it making a map. So map out the city. This would probably be something you do at like a college level, right? Like right, you can't just go through the first five links for this, right? You're going to have to go look at papers that are drilling down into specific uh, interest areas. So what do we get? So it gives us an overview. And to call this out, it took 21 minutes to do this research and use 30 sources. So it was quite an intensive query. It looks a lot like a research paper. You know, it's got those like inline sources and then it tries to break it down depending on whatever research task you give it. And then, so really what we're focusing on here is like how much specific information was it able to gather about the sites? And as Chris was saying, that's all scattered in different places. So it seems to be reasoning through some different sites. Um, and pulling out information. You can see at the bottom of a lot of these sections, it'll say room, uh, and it'll give a description of that. So that's it synthesizing the data to say, hey, here's what the room approximately should look like, and now we'll see it pull that into the table. Here's the table where it's pulling together a lot of this information. Um, and then most importantly, we, were at, we wanted to be able to use the data from this research run to generate some sort of visual. We, we know it's not great to look at a wall of text, so we want to try to include visuals in all of our tests here. And so th this spatial relationships column and the approximate sizing slash area column will be very important pieces of data for then uh, generating a script to like build it into a map. Yeah. So Chris, in your opinion, how good was this just at like a very high level? Um, so at a high level, it's doing a really good job. I mean, you have a bunch of different digs that have been done. They all do their reports. They talk about what's here. For the most part, what we're seeing here is existing buildings that have been named. Uh, but then yeah. you're seeing it extrapolate a bit when it says things like shops and bars. One of the things when we read through the text that it was doing that was really clever was you have the dig sites and then you have people that specialized in graffiti and it was connecting those sources. So this is beyond, yeah. to your point, just doing a Google search or trying to come up with, uh, here's all the relevant links. It's actually synthesizing the data a much bigger response than we've ever gotten from the models before. And nice to see the spatial relationship. I think it's doing the whole, whole city right now. To give you a visual representation of what it was able to put together, we, we asked it to, to generate a script based on all this data. And so it generated a Python script that goes through and pulls those the rows from that table and tries to build it into some coherent visual so we can pull that up now. So this is pretty great. I mean, look, you're going to look at this and say, this doesn't look like a freaking map at all. Like, where's all the spatial relationship? Where's, uh, if you've ever seen a map of Herculaneum, it's much more kind of gnarly than this. But for it to take that information from the internet, figure out the grid, and lay it out on the grid is wild. You can imagine when we tack on, like, the implementation agent, if you will, and it can go back and forth with the research agent and tell it, hey, that's right, that's wrong you would expect this to increase dramatically. Awesome, so now we're gonna move on to our next test. Um, this one's looking at business reasoning slash doing product development, like product development, where you might have an idea of something and you really wanna go do some market research to validate, hey, like, what is it I should exactly build? You might have a high level idea, but then you need the specifics. So for this one, on our channel, we have a game we often refer to called Serverville, um, and we are trying to have market research around this. We usually have a very 
relatively short prompt. But for this, we're now saying, hey, if we were to build this game, how should we build it? What should we build? Who are we focusing on as target audience? Should it be a mobile game or not? And we want it to go look through actual data to be like, hey, this is what I recommend you building. This is what's going to be successful. Um, so we went ahead and made a prompt for that. So again, made a, a great kind of uh, report here. It's a very, very long prompt. Uh, sorry, very, very long report. Um, talks about we should obviously focus on, focus on mobile as a primary platform. It gives it um, stats about like, hey, mobile and the idle game thing works really well together. So this is where maybe it gets interesting is it starts to extrapolate a little bit off of what it was searching for and starts to lay out our, our gameplay mechanics and features. So it's talking things like passive resource generation, ex you know, exponential growth and upgrades, things that we would have had in our prompt. And then it does some of this interesting things about like in the server build context, the player might start with a single server and update it, upgrade it to a server rack. So it's not yeah. only finding how games like Farmville work, but also starting to apply it to the scenario that we've put it in. Pulls in the correct kind of competitor analysis as we look through. So again, you're just seeing a depth of response here that beyond anything we've been getting from the models. Um, yeah. It really shows how much you can fine-tune a specific agent to accomplish a task and expect a kind of order of magnitude better result. 100%. And maybe as a bonus round, given we were just talking about how you could link these things together, let's go ahead and see with this massive prompt if it's able to build Serverville from this much bigger, more in-depth prompt. Yep. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give O3Mini higher chance to, with this spec, make a game in one shot. Um, we don't expect it to do too well. This is a visualization. We want to see how it goes with this massive prompt. Now trying to make Serverville doesn't make anything different. So we've asked it to uh, go ahead and basically just implement the spec. We did get a response. Um, it's tried to think about like the isometric view because it kind of you know thought about Farmville being isometric. Click on a server rack to upgrade it. Hey, I mean. Not as good of an implementation versus if we give it a specific prompt. I think that's probably because the prompt is so big with so mm -hmm. much like research. But you can see where we're going to need something agentic to take that, break it down into like sub prompts, and then iterate to make something yep. great. So not unexpected, um, but hey, at least it made a little bit of a visualization for folks. Cool. So we've moved on to our final um, test we're going to show, and that is to do with researching techniques for procedurally generated uh, terrain. Um, so you'll notice that from some of our tests we do on the channel, like the planet generation, um, that's all around basically generating terrain. Jacob is our resident expert in this, so he can probably talk to the specifics, but we made a kind of very open-ended prompt that tries to explore um, what the kind of current research is. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's going through like diff different techniques people use to, to generate terrain, and I asked it to really focus on generating uh, like wide array of outputs, so like diverse terrain coming out of the same algorithm. Uh, and so to, to summarize a little bit, it goes over some of the fundamentals like noise and the different types of algorithms that people use to get the sort of coherent randomness you need when you're generating terrain. Mm -hmm. um, then it also talks about simulation-based techniques, which are less frequently used at runtime because they require a bunch of iterative processing. And then a machine learning approaches, which is you know still sort of in its inf infancy for terrain generation. And then it's talking about hy hybridization across those different methods. And eventually it gets into, you know, as we were reading it before, it's mentioning Minecraft techniques, No Man's Sky techniques. This is exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to get like a broad survey because now in the effort, in the interest of getting you guys a good visual, we're going to ask it to first propose a method of generating interesting terrain. And then we're going to ask it to implement it. So hopefully we get a cool visual for what it actually has been thinking through here. It first starts talking through a global tectonic framework, which is very interesting, right? It's going to start generating based on tectonic plates. Huh. Uh, oh, man. Wow. <laughs> it's getting advanced. We'll see how this goes. This is a bit of a bonus round. We're not expecting it to be, like, amazingly good. Um, but hopefully it gives you a visual for, like, yeah. all that esoteric stuff it was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll be able to call out if it actually did the things it said or not. Yeah, 100 Wildly fast. This looks like gnarlier than our usual planet generation results. So yeah, okay. So what? what well, this is actually really cool. So yeah. what? What we've done? What it seems to have done is, as you can remember from the, from the reasoning that it was talking about simulating some sort of tectonic plate thing. Yeah. And then collision factor is about like how they collide. So we're getting these mountains that you can see, these like sort of mountain ridges. Yeah. And then as we drag the collision factor down, the mountains will be less. Will be less. Tall. Uh, so let's bring that back to the middle, and then if we bring down the plate count, we see less mountain ranges. Yeah, it's just one. And then if we bring the plate count way up, we see a lot of 
sort of inter, like interspersed mountain ranges. Yep. We can change the base elevation, which brings up the whole thing. Uh, let's bring this back down to something a little more manageable here. Then we can change the noise amplitude, which will make it more spiky. Yeah. We can bring down the amplitude to make it flatter. Mm -hmm. And then this is a good way to see uh, how we can change how it's layering noise, right? On high octaves, we see, all, we see some parts that are smoother than some parts that have more detail. And then if we pull down the amount of octaves of noise, it's a little flatter. Mm. So it's, it's actually very, it's cool to see detail amplitude will make more details. Even though this isn't as visually appealing as mm. when, we, when we ask for like an MVP planet that looks nice, yeah. this is way more detailed in terms of the algorithm that yeah. it developed for generating the planet and it gives me a lot more control over what it's actually generating. And this as a starting point for building something really deep that can generate many different types of realistic planets is actually, like, this is super useful for that purpose, it seems like. Well, props off Bravo. to uh, O3 Mini. Um, kind of impressive to take all that information and distill into something real. Um, mm -hmm. So awesome to see that you can, you know, this release is about the research and... Summarizing sort of our take, I don't think we've been disappointed with any of the research. So every research mm -hmm. question we've given it has been really well done, thorough, beyond what you can get from a simple Google search. If you ask a lot of questions with web search enabled right now, you just get a summary of the first five Google yeah. results, basically. Or Bing, yeah. I forget what OpenAI is using on the back end. But deep reasoning or deep research seems to do a lot more. It's getting a lot more sources. It seems to be understanding the space, synthesizing it. So this is a step change. Really exciting to see. I'll be stoked to see what everybody does as it moves down the pricing tiers. Really amazing results. And if you have any suggestions of what we should run, let us know in the comments. Um, we'd be happy to run it. Um, we do have queries in the pro. So um, want to get our values worth and would love yeah. to like, you know, hear what you guys think would be useful to run. But I I do think this is a very actionable release. Like even for, mm -hmm. for most users who are at the at the sophistication where they want to pay for a pro tier, it could research, you know, you buying a house. It could research, uh, they mm -hmm. showed in the demo, buying skis. It can, it can do these things and give you an answer that's way better than you can currently get with existing tools. There's an immediate like, oh, I know what to do with this that a general model release struggles a bit more with because the general model release is uh, just pretty broad. This this focuses you down to, hey, you want to research something and you want to get a grad school student level answer, this can do that. And that's pretty amazing. I, I'm very curious to see how it impacts things like the consulting world, places mm -hmm. where you're paying for people to go do this work. I expect mm -hmm. to have, have some uh, some shock from this. Yeah, I don't know how long that'll take, but, but it's certainly I would go to this first before I hired a Deloitte, for instance. <laughs> Yeah, why not, right? Yep. Take a yeah, just super impressive overall. I'm excited to play around more and like continue to do what we've been doing in this video of kind of chaining these capabilities with other capabilities. Yeah. I think as we were all sort of mentioning throughout the video, it seems seems like as we start to see more types of long running tasks, and especially as you can combine them together, like do research and then maybe spend a long time writing implementing the code. Uh, and if we could get that same level of sort of and care applied to the coding as the research, then. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll be able to do a lot with these things. Starting to see that agentic world come through, guys. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. Um, so please right. feel free to like, follow, subscribe if you want to stick along for the journey. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.